Welcome to the Health and Wellness Trailblazers podcast, part of the Digital Trailblazer podcast family. This podcast is dedicated to bringing you experts and trailblazers, helping you to live a healthier, longer lasting, and more beautiful life. Welcome back, Trailblazers. If you're new here, I'm Alicia, and today I'm talking with Daniel Rass. Daniel, it's so good to have you. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about what you do? Thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I am from Israel. When I was six, my family and I moved to China, and this was in 2004. There was only strictly Chinese food, which is exactly what you imagine it to be in the movies, and I was the most picky eater on the planet. So I started from McDonald's and Starbucks. I would consumed nothing from ages six to 12. The most wow. healthy child there is. At the, at the age of 12, I started playing basketball, and my brother convinced me that to get better at basketball, I need to improve my diet, which was pretty much anything except what I was doing. So slowly started getting more into health and fitness, starting eating healthier, and I got really good at basketball. However, I was only confident on the basketball court, nowhere else. And at the age of 17, I started taking care of my body, getting more into lifting weights, exercising. And I realized that I like a basketball. I could take my body with me everywhere I went. So the confidence translated into everyday life because fitness is the most transferable skill there is. And that motivated me to go to uh, Canada to get an exercise and nutrition degree. I became a personal trainer, worked in a couple of gyms. Then in 2020, I'm sure a few of your audience heard there was a lockdown thing going on. <laughs> so that is when I started my online fitness business. And I realized that even after the pandemic, people that often need the most help hate going to the gym. So now I specialize in helping people lose weight without going to the gym. And yeah, that is a brief summary of who I am and what I do. Yeah, that's very interesting. So the concept of, of getting fit without going to the gym. Walk me through what that looks like for people. So firstly, I'm not sure about you, but when everything shut down, I personally was not prepared at all. I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't have any equipment prepared. Just from one day to the next, stay at home for the next two years. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I had to adjust. I had to work out at home because I still wanted to remain fit. And this was after over a decade of me being into health and fitness. And I realized that Gordon Ramsay, the chef, can make a better meal with one pan than the average person can with five pans. Because it's not about how much equipment you have, it's about knowing what to do. And even just with my own body weight, I knew what to do specifically for me. So I was still able to get myself great results. And other people, if they had the right plan, if they had the right customization, they could still get phenomenal results at home if they have the right plan. And a big reason why people don't get the results they want is because they're not consistent. And it's not easier to be consistent if you work at home than travel to the gym. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's a very interesting concept that you've spoke about with Gordon Ramsay. I never really thought about that, but you're right. So this is very cool. So how, how, how are you getting people results with that like one pan method? Yeah. So the whole approach is it has to be customized because what works for one person doesn't work for another person. And so many people follow diets or exercise routines that may work phenomenally for a few select people, but the odds are that it works for everyone is slim. Same thing if you think about learning to improve to drive. Everyone knows green means go and red means stop. But if you say that to an incompetent driver, they're not going to pass a driving test. That's the problem with people think, hey, I can lose weight on my own. I just eat less and move more. However, there's a thousand little nuances that is the reason why most people are overweight. And that's why personalization is everything. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. So what are some of the, the proudest moments that you've had in working with people? I would say the fact that obviously people lose weight, they get rid of their clothes, they get off medication. But the coolest thing is when the partner, uh, a wife of one of my clients, who was super skeptical to begin with, also got off medication, also lost, lost weight, just because of the habits that he built. Because... Improving your health is more than just about you. It 
carries over into everyday life and people know this instantly. If you were to improve your piano playing skills by 10x, unless you talk about it, no one would know. But if you improve your health and fitness, every room that you go to, everyone's going to know instantly and everyone's going to want to pick up your habits, which will improve their life drastically as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, your health is something that you have to have your entire life. You have one body to live in yeah. and all of those little things add up. And if you're you're changing your health, you're absolutely changing the rest of your life. And as you mentioned, it's rippling into the lives of everyone else in your world, for sure. Yeah, this is so cool. So talk to me a little bit about how, what it looks like to work with someone. I know everything is customized, yeah. but, but what is the, the, typical process look like if if I were to come to you with an, a need to change my health? What, it, what would it look like? Definitely. So my approach is pretty much the opposite of how most people go about it. Most people go about health and fitness the January 1st approach, as in they did absolutely nothing for months on end. And all of a sudden they want to work out three hours a day, seven days a week. They want right. to eat nothing but bananas and lettuce. And they want to drink seven gallons of water a day. That's an awful idea because the likelihood you'll stick with it for more than 10 days is slim to none. Yeah. I like to start with what I call the easy wins. Things that take zero time or effort, but move the needle in your favor because people don't like motivation. They like tangible results. And if I can get you to see tangible results, even when you're most busy, even when life is most hectic, then I know for a fact that you can continue no matter what's going on. So... Yeah. A few examples of easy wins. Right now, we're talking. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm standing. My right. computer just died, so instead of using a standing desk, I'm just using my phone. But if my computer didn't die, I'd have used a standing desk to talk. Every time I talk on the phone in general, if it's not a video, I always walk. I am never stationary. I'm having the conversation anyways. Might as well burn extra calories. Right. Yeah, that's a great easy win. Are there any other tips or advice that you can give listeners to get another easy win in their day? Yeah, there's like 12. But uh, <laughs> uh, another, an, another easy one would be to always have a water bottle within arm's reach, right? So mm -hmm. I just have like a cup right now. Oh, exactly, fantastic. Love to see that. Always have a drink within arm's reach because a lot of time people are not hungry, they're bored or dehydrated. Right. And when you're dehydrated, which is 75% of the population, you look and feel bloated, you're more likely to crave junk food, you have less energy, you're more likely to make bad decisions. So right. easy win, drink water and have it close by because even if a water bottle is 30 seconds away, you're way less likely to, to drink it. But if it's a second away, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, those are both very great tips. Uh, standing while you're doing a task, any task that you could stand and do, stand and yeah. do it. That's awesome. And then, yeah, having the water bottle within arm's reach. I can tell you that that's true. If mine is not within arm's reach, I will not go get it. It it will just be like, oh well, I'll do that in a minute. But then the minute turns into an hour and another hour, and before long, you know, you haven't gotten your water in for the day. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. And yeah. it's important for people to realize that. People that are fit versus people that are, have been overweight for decades, it's not like people that are fit work that much harder. It's not like they have an infinite amount more willpower than people that are overweight. They just have better systems. They just have it that's able to make the lifestyle around it so it's easier to continue. Yeah. To I, I love that, that, that people aren't more motivated than others they just have better processes that's that's a really good point so tell me i'm curious how are you bringing clients into your world so just posting on social media i'm biggest on twitter or x for some reason people like me there i have fifty thousand followers i post daily and people see valuable tips they see things that is sustainable that's not a fair diet my diet doesn't have a name i believe if a diet has a name it's not sustainable Right, yeah. so I call it a you diet, something that you can sustain with. And they just see the approach. I have a lot of testimonials, which definitely help. So people see that, then they message me, and then we get on a call, and I show them the program, and they get started. And then yeah. continue the loop. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's that's very cool. What what are your next steps or your plans for growth? Honestly, as boring as it may sound, just do more of the same. I feel like in regards to business, in regards to fitness, in regards to a lot of things, when something works, the best thing to do is to double down. So many people want to chase something else. Yeah. And I definitely see this a lot in business because I just get my clients' results. I post testimonials, more clients, more people want to talk to me, and then I talk with them, sell more people. It's a pretty simple process. If I was to all of a sudden change business models or go into crypto or do something that's completely right. unrelated, that will probably get me distracted. It's kind of like being in a successful marriage and say, hmm, this is good. I'm going to go date somebody else. <laughs> I don't think that's a smart move. And as simple right. as it may sound, in goes to relationships, in goes to business, people do that all the time. Yeah, that's true. That's a really good point. You're you're not wrong. That's that's what people do for sure. So you have a very large following on Twitter on X. Are you I, I'm I don't have a I don't spend a lot of time on that platform. Is there a yeah. community feature on on X on Twitter? There they have yeah, spaces, but it's not good. right? It's not good. Okay. Yeah. I wondered if they had like do you have an email list that you're putting people on? No, I personally just don't like email. And <laughs> I'm going to relate it to fitness as well. Uh-huh. Let's say deadlifts. Deadlifts are a fantastic exercise. I personally don't like it, so I don't eat it. Kombucha, super healthy drink. I personally think it's disgusting. I don't drink yeah. it. There's nothing that you have to do. To succeed in business, you don't have to have an email list. Is it useful? Sure. But if you don't like it, there's so many other ways to win. Yeah. Same thing with fitness. Are deadlifts useful? Sure, but you don't have to do it to get great results. Is kombucha healthy? Yes, but you don't have to drink it. There's so many other ways to succeed. So I personally don't like email, so I don't use it. I use mostly Twitter, but I'm growing my Instagram slowly. I just hired a videographer so I can make better quality reels. I think it's going to be a more fun way to show how I go about things. So my Instagram is going to get bigger in the near future. I'm pretty confident yeah. about that. So is my YouTube. But yeah. This is like a fitness and a business lesson. You don't have to do anything. Stick to what works, what you right. enjoy, what you feel like you can sustain. Yeah, I think video content is a is a great move for you. Are you doing a lot of video content on Twitter? Yeah. Um, the thing I like about Twitter is there are no rules. In Instagram, yeah. you kind of have to post sh- reels, right. right? On YouTube, you yeah. kind of have to post shorts. Even long form is not doing nearly as well as shorts on YouTube. So there's kind of rules you have to abide by. Twitter, right. it's whatever you want, and you never know what hits. So yeah. I kind of like that. Right. But yeah, once my reels start popping, hopefully, then I'll post it on Twitter as well. Right. Yeah, that's that's a great idea for sure. I think that video content is awesome. Uh, what I'm, what I see on YouTube is shorts are great for getting people to see you, and then yeah. your longer form content will show up in there in their feed, in their, on their homepage, right? So if they've engaged with your shorts, then you can get, it's kind of a gateway into your longer form content. So yeah, definitely yeah. good. The, a the, great quote with that is, uh, short form makes you well known, long form makes you known well. Yes, absolutely. That's really good. So the only thing that I would push back a little on about the email list, and not that you have Mm -hmm. to do email, but don't don't trust that Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or any of the platforms will always be there. Because if you can get them off there where you if something blows up on Twitter or X, like if that disappears, then you don't lose all of your people. So even if it comes down to, you know, figuring out a way to extract them off of Twitter with a phone number so that you could do like text blasts or however Mm. you like to communicate with people that way if something happens to the platform you're not like starting over again for sure that's that's a good point i'll definitely take that feedback what are your thoughts regarding telegram having a telegram i i don't use telegram i can't speak to it so i don't have a lot to say Okay. I don't know enough about the platform to really be able to to give any advice or any tips on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I, I just take that feedback. The I guess the biggest reason why uh, I don't have the best experience with email is I have like five copywriters a day message me telling right. me they'll write my emails for me, <laughs> and I I'm like give a few a, a shot because they said they'll do it for free, and they just dis- disappointed greatly. 
<laughs> but maybe I should just do it on my own and just. Well, really, what you could take, how you could take the resistance out of that is if you're posting on Twitter every day, then yeah. just use that as your content for your email. You don't have to come up with some elaborate thing. Just think of it as a tweet, right? That you're mm -hmm. just engaging in a different way on a different on a different platform. Just it's another way to reach out to people, but it's a way for you to get those people in your world so that you you own the content. Yeah, yeah. Then, right. You own the list, yeah. 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 So that's definitely something that I would say would be an, a great next move for you. And don't think that you have to outsource it to somebody else because okay. it's it's hard it's to get that, you know, that yeah. branding right whenever you're giving it to somebody else. Yeah, I don't like to outsource anything. I do other than the video edits, right? Because I don't care about I don't outsource anything. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that you could very easily integrate that into your day without it being a thing that's really I causing see. a lot of resistance in, in you. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Daniel, it's been right. so great having you here today. Thanks for sharing all of this value with our listeners. Definitely. I really appreciate your insights as well. Yeah, no problem. Uh, let's see. Let's push people off to where they can connect with you. I know we talked about it a couple of times, but say it again, just in case uh, anybody was missing that moment. So I'm most active on Twitter or X at Daniel Raz underscore fit. And depending on when you listen to this, hopefully you can search my name on Instagram, Daniel Raz underscore fit, and I'll be pretty high up there as well. And YouTube, Facebook, Daniel Raz underscore fit. It's the same content as um, Twitter, but hopefully I'll, our Facebook is the same content as Twitter, but Instagram and YouTube will be its own reels. It will be different. And I think it will be more entertaining than uh, entertaining and educational. That's, that's my hope. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I will make sure to link everything so that people can click on it and find you easily. Again, thank you so much for being here today and sharing all of this with our audience. It's been wonderful. Definitely. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. And for everyone listening, we'd love it if you'd like this episode and subscribe wherever you're consuming this podcast. Thanks for listening.